So maybe God is trying to show you. Yeah, they they may have thrown you in the fire, but I'm going to sustain you through it. And then I'm going to bring you out. That everybody, including your enemies, know that he brought you out. Man. Hey everybody, welcome back to another, um, I guess we call it an episode, I don't know, who's counting, but uh, welcome back to another um, episode of Kingdom Ties, and so today I just want to talk to you about bowing down to idols, and so I'm coming from the uh, book of the Bible, Daniel chapter 3, and so in Daniel chapter 3, um, there was a king called Nebuchadnezzar, and Nebuchadnezzar, he made this golden image, this golden statue, you know, and so um, he had commanded for that everyone, especially the people in government, to bow down to this image, to bow down to um, this golden statue when the music, when they hear the music play. And so in Daniel chapter three, um, Daniel has three friends, Shad, Rat, Me, Shad, and Abednego. And so um, three other people had came, had came to King Nebuchadnezzar and they had said that the three Jews that you have appointed over certain areas in government are not bowing down to this image. And so Nebuchadnezzar, he he got mad. And so uh, he had called for um, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego to come into his um, place and to talk to him. And so the um, he asked the Jews why they didn't bow down. And so the Jews said, we don't have to answer you about this matter we don't have to give you an answer about this now mind you that's the most gangster answer i ever heard in the bible like i'm not even gonna lie to you like, like that is like one of the most gangster answers i ever heard like in the bible um which <laughs> they nebuchadnezzar had said why don't you bow down to this image and the three jews said we don't have to give you an answer about this so that means they made up in their mind like we don't got to talk to you about this like we already made up our mind like no we're not bound down to this and then on top of that they said <laughs> then on top of that they said so if you have to throw us into the furnace then throw us into the furnace into the furnace but our god will deliver us and then they said even so if he does not deliver us then you and the rest of your people will know that we're not bowing down to your gods and worshiping them. So that's how tight, that's how firm that the three Jews made up in their mind. That's how much they know that their God is real and that their God is able to deliver them. Okay. And that his, that he has the power to deliver them. And even if he don't deliver them, they still would not bow down to another God. Bro come on that means that like you have seen some things you have had encounters with god to make you believe that it doesn't matter what you do to me i know that he can do this and even if he doesn't do this i still know that i'm not doing this what you're asking of me gangster <laughs> oh my god it's just gangster but I love it because it's just like, I feel like that's what we need now and today. Like, there's so many idols and images of golden statues and stuff that people want you to bow down to. Like, people want to want you to bow down to the pressures of culture. Like, you got to look a certain type of way. You got to dress like this. You got to have this type of car. You got to have this certain amount of money. And it's just like, bro, like, no, I don't. No, I do not. I do not have to bow down to what y'all are doing. I do not have to bow down to the drugs and stuff that y'all out here doing. I'm not, I don't have to bow down to the stuff that y'all even drinking on, like for real. Like, I don't have to bow down to that because me and God relationship is so tight. Like, I don't gotta do that. Like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. No, because I respect my relationship with God too much. And that's what we need today. We gotta respect our relationship with God, bro. We gotta honor him. And then the story's not done. The story's not done. But, so, when uh, the three Jews said that to uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, he was like, um, he was like, okay, all right, 
I want all three of them to be bound and to be tied and to be thrown into the furnace. But before you throw them into the furnace, turn it up seven times harder. He said, turn it up seven times harder. I mean, the furnace is already hot. You feel me? And then on top of that, he said, turn it up seven times. Okay. That means that he's trying to kill them. Like he does not, he does not see, he does not feel like they're worthy enough to be in his presence anymore. He's killing them. And you know what I'm saying? And so he had three guards to tie, to tie them up and to bound them. Right. And so as they were being led to the furnace, the furnace was so hot that the people who were leading um, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego died because the furnace was that high. Now, mind you, they died. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego didn't die. So, let me just insert this little miracle right here. Like, they did not, they told King Nebuchadnezzar that it wasn't bowing down. And then on top of that, the people that <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar told to tie them up and to take them and to be thrown into the furnace, they died on the way there. So that means that God was already like, uh-uh, you're not throwing my people into the fire. So the three people that was leading, that was leading the three Jews, they died on the way there. That's miracle number one. Okay, I'm just saying, like, because, like, if the fire killed them, it was supposed to kill Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, too. Because they were bound being led up there. And so, when they were in the fire, when they got cast into the fire, King Nebuchadnezzar had looked into the furnace. And he seen that there were not only three people, but there was an extra one in there. There was four people in there. And then... They were bound before they was cast into the fire, into the furnace. But when he looked at them, they were walking around, looking, <laughs> with the fourth person in there. And then on top of that, he seen and he saw that their clothes wasn't being burnt. Their clothes wasn't being scorched or anything. They were just chilling in the fire like, what's up? Shad Rat, you all right, bro? You all right, Shad Rat? Yeah, me check. I'm alright. You know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh, I'm for real. Like, <laughs> what? Like God is, God, God is faithful. He's faithful. When he, when King Nebuchadnezzar called out the three Hebrews, he seen that their clothes were not burned. He seen that they didn't have no marks on them. And he even looked at their clothes and they didn't look like they were burnt or anything. They didn't even smell like fire. And so Nebuchadnezzar just basically acknowledged that their God was able to save them. Their God was able to deliver them out of the fire. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, it says that Jesus Christ is the same today as yesterday and forever. The same thing that happened to Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, that God was being just as faithful to them, God would be just as faithful to you if you stick with him. If you stick with him, God will be just as faithful as he did to Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Boom. There's, 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 I'm for real, like, that's, that, that's the one. That's the one. I'm for real, like, God is that faithful, bro. God is that faithful. If you stay faithful to him, he will be faithful to you. He does not change. He does not change, and he will not change. He, He's the same as today, as yesterday, and will be the same forever. God does not change. The same way he feel about, he felt about me, Shad, Shad, and Abednego, he feel about you. He loves you. He doesn't have no negative thought towards you. He loves you that much. And so if you stay faithful to God, he will be faithful to you. And if you're not seeing God's <laughs> God's hand in your life, I'm for real, just reevaluate your life. I'm for real, like all the things that could have went wrong, but it didn't, that was God. And even if you were in a furnace of your own, how did you come out? Did you come out in your right mind? Did you come out stronger than you did? 
God is faithful. And I feel like sometimes that we feel like God is just a genie and that when we pray for something, it just happens. Or like we pray against something and and our prayer doesn't get answered. We'll be like, oh man, God ain't real. See what I'm talking about? Like, like no, bro. Like sometimes God lets stuff happen to prove that he's with you. I mean, that's the truth. Some like like God does answer prayers. He does. But if he doesn't answer something, one, either we're asking out of the wrong motive, meaning we're doing it for selfish reasons and selfish desires. Two, if he doesn't answer your prayer, he's trying to prove himself to you that he can bring you out and that he can sustain you while you're in it. And that's what he did with me, Shad, Shadrach, and Abednego. He didn't, he let them get in the fire, but he proved himself to me, Shad, Shadrach, and Abednego, and to King Nebuchadnezzar that he has the power to deliver them. So if you're looking for God to move in your life, if you're looking for God to answer your prayers, and you've been praying, you've been praying, and you feel like he's not listening and stuff like that, just reevaluate this. Check your heart. See if you're asking out of wrong motive. See if you're just doing it just for yourself. And if you're not, go to number two. Two, it's been a long time since I've been in this. You feel me? I've been in this situation for a long time. Then, But while I've been in this, I have been, I have been like, okay, if you have been sustained in your furnace, meaning in your situation that you've been looking for God to bring you out, God is proving to you that he can sustain you. Some people have been saying that they're, that they're their own God. They can pull themselves out of situations. No. You can't pull yourself out of anything. Everything that you do from you breathing, from you moving, from you even just doing even simple stuff, God provides us to give us that strength to do that. That's not you. Not at least. And so, if you have been praying, if you have been asking God to bring you out of a situation, and he hasn't, maybe he's trying to prove himself to you that he can sustain you in it and then deliver you from it. <laughs> oh... I'm so blown away. Let's go. Yes, let's go. I'm real. So maybe God is trying to show you. Yeah, they they may have thrown you in the fire, but I'm going to sustain you through it. And then I'm going to bring you out. That everybody, including your enemies, know that he brung you out. Man. <laughs> Bro, let's go. Today was a great day. Today was a great message. Oh my God, it was a great message. Jesus, you're just amazing. All right, but that's the end of my message for today. I uh, appreciate everybody for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. You feel what I'm saying? Um, share with your people, share with your friends. And yeah, I will be back with another video soon. All right, bye.